Hi there, this is Buddy in Midland, Texas. Uh, I'm going to do another Haley Dunn video today. I've done many of them. And, but this time I'm going to kind of do it different. I'm going to break down and, and just do one of the, of the what I call witnesses. And, uh, and just focus because there is so much evidence. It's really to the level of absurdity is what it is. I mean, there's, there's more than a half dozen people documented as saying that Haley was, was uh, uh, killed over in Odessa. And, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and and there's just all kinds of details of who where when how you know and and just multiple people and and, and you know it, it, it's truly amazing that uh there hasn't been any arrest and i believe it, the the real reason is there's connection back to this house and and probably to the underground facilities because it's a fact that that i wrote the department of justice on march 14 2013 and i suggested that they come here and they look in the underground facilities that multiple people have said were here by my house believed to be where the old show parties were held and 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 uh and connected the multiple murders connected the murder to my life etc well anyway two days later the remains of haley was found in uh scurry county well and she'd been missing for over two years you know i mean think about that uh, the, how coincidental that is you know she's missing for over two years as soon as i write the department of justice and suggest they come here poof oh here we oh we found her we don't have to go to buddy's house now you see what i'm saying and now here's all these people documented saying what happened to haley and it doesn't it's not in the news you know it's being ignored it's a cover-up to what's going on and i mean as far as i'm concerned what what this story is today i'm gonna name it the drug counselor it's going to be about a woman named christy Otts, and and i'm going to tell you and and uh basically you know I, I i don't like to say this person said this and and i don't you know i i have screenshots of of what was said posted uh comments or posted etc and at the very end I'm, there's only a couple of them and i'm going to show you them but i've, I've got a short read and i'm going to read that to you right here and explain this and and so i'm really only focusing on this one uh one what i call witness christy Otts. okay and 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 uh and then that you get an idea and i think you know that by itself that's that's not even the other half dozen more than a half dozen there's more than a half dozen other people with with uh also with their or their testimony eyewitness testimony and other details but so here i'm going to start in june 2015 i created and posted a video called midland texas tunnels and crimes part three I actually posted five of them and uh, it, it had over 6,000 views uh, on YouTube, even more on Facebook. In this video, I'll talk about the secluded truck unloading lane behind my home, the, the uh, tunnels, the, the people in the attic, the suspicious trucker traffic, and, and, and two people at the Home Depot store that told me that prostitution was going on back there. One day I was driving by, I saw a young girl at the sleeper, at the sleeper cab of an 18-wheeler. I suspected child sex trafficking in coordination with the people breaking in my home. Okay. In this video, I mentioned Haley Dunn, the 13-year-old famous missing murdered child from Colorado City, Texas. She went missing in December 2010, okay? And uh, at that time, uh, her remains had not been found, and, and she was still missing, okay? And so, anyways, uh, I posted that video. Like I said, it had th thousands of views. And, and a year later, a woman named Christy Otts watches the video. This is in 2016, and she comments. And I'm going to go show you. You can go read her comment right now on my Facebook or on my YouTube. And, and she tells me something about people breaking into her home uh, here in Midland. She's from Midland. And she said, she wrote, and, I, and now I'm reading what she wrote. I received Haley Dunn's murder confession in June 2015. Since reporting it, my life has gone upside down. I went from a successful college graduate in psychology with a decent social life and wonderful children to someone who people think are crazy, no longer have my children, no job, and I'm losing everything down to my house and car. Uh, this comment is still there. And so uh, that's what she wrote me, uh, you know, that she got the confession to Haley Dunn. Uh, it, it, you know, she, she is the drug counselor, the drug rehab counselor. Okay. 
Christie then contacts me on Facebook Messenger using a fake name. Okay, Allison Mack. This name doesn't have anything to do with the infamous actress that was involved in the sex cult and the NXVIM and, and all that stuff. Okay, this was before then and all that. I've had people ask about that, but I think it was a family name. She made it up. It's a fake name she made up. Anyway, she tells me that she got the confession while working at Turning Point. I think that's a drug rehab place over there. And said, and here, once again, I'm reading what she said. And I'm going to show you this. I have, I have print screens of what she said. She said, the guy said she, Haley, was traded by her mother for a drug balance of $135 worth of meth. While she was in the care of the dealer, she flipped out and they shot her up with something. She overdosed and died. The guy, uh, uh, the guy who confessed to me said he took her to her mother and they stuffed her into a box. He described the way they had to bend her and break her to fit. Then they buried her on a ranch outside of Odessa. This was dated on February 24, 2016. Okay. So, so I have a print screen of where, where Christy contacted me there and that's her exact words. And it was actually longer than that. I have the entire conversation. Okay. Okay, she also sends me emails, and I have these emails, and, and she sends several of these emails with attachments, and, and this is where she tells me that the guy's name, and the guy's name is Brett Bushman, who she calls BB in the emails, and she tells me that, okay? And it's unknown if he is related to the super wealthy Bushman family in Odessa that owns the mall and CBS 7 and MCM Elegante and A1 Mobile Homes and all them other businesses. I, I don't know that. Uh, what I do know is CBS 7 has me blocked and I can't post on their site and they've never uh, posted this evidence. You know, I know that for a fact. Anyway, Christy takes a picture of her computer screen showing me an email that she was sending to Julie Elliott and Janie Tippett. She copied a woman named Ramona Thomas on this and attached a document titled Christy Smith Resonation. So evidently she also goes by Christy Smith and, and uh, uh, and, and and I'm assuming that's her bosses or whatever down at Turning Point, okay? And like I said, she looks like she took her picture of of, of the screen. I, I'm gonna show it to you in a minute. In in this letter that's longer than than what I read, she says in part, and I'm gonna quote again. She says, since he Bushman Brett Bushman did have a hand in stuffing a child's body inside of a safe, and and I assumed it was Haley, of course. He inflicted harm on a child and technically should be reported. Now, now she ain't telling me that. She's telling her bosses that, okay, her in her re resignation letter, okay, and, and I think she was upset, okay. She also said that being that this meeting took place less than 48 hours from his confession of the involvement in three separate homicides, one of which being the son of Glenna, our counselor, this makes me uncomfortable and a bit concerned for myself as well as my children concerning his organizational affiliation. Okay, And, and, and I took that to mean affiliated I, I, in is what I believe means as in gang member. And I really believe that it was affiliated with that Aryan Brotherhood, Circle, whatever, ABAC, them people over there. The same ones that multiple other people have named. They've actually named the, them gang members. Okay. Anyways, I'm, I'm going on. Uh, I recognize that what Christie was telling me in these emails and communications was, was almost the same thing that, that, that I read that News West 9 had reported in 2012 about another woman named Sonia Renee Callahan uh, and, and saying that it was killed over a family drug debt. She was overdosed at a house over in Odessa. And, and, and we can go to the internet and look that up on News West 9. It's still there for everybody to read. And that was from Sonia Renee Callahan. Interestingly, I got a phone call where uh, Haley's dad, Clint Dunn, called me and I recorded it and he told me that he believed what Sonia was saying and that's what Sonia said. On another phone call with Sonia, I recorded her and she's describing the moment Haley died. You know, she was there. She's an eyewitness. She said, buddy, what was I supposed to do is either her and me or just her. And she's telling me about this little girl, 13 year old being murdered okay, at a home over in Odessa. Okay. And so anyways, uh, I, once I recognized that the, what Christy was saying is the same thing that, that Sonia Renee was saying, that's when I made that first Haley Dunn video called Haley Dunn Murder Confession. Now, I don't know how many views it had, but it was a bunch. And uh, I think 40,000, 60,000 a bunch. I mean, almost instantly. It was incredible. And, and I chose this name based on what the words of Christy said. I got the confession for Haley Dunn. You know, that's what she wrote. It's on my YouTube channel. <clears throat> 
and uh, I have another screenshot. <coughs> this is Christy, aka Allison Mack, shared this video on Facebook and wrote, so I'm the second lady. And then basically what happened in the Haley Dunn murder confession, I don't name her. I leave her anonymous. And and she didn't ask me to. I, I just did it, you know, because I, you know, I just didn't blast her name, basically. But she was proud. Christy was proud that of this. And, you know, and I really felt like she was doing the right thing or whatever, uh, you know, I mean, she really sincerely, uh, that was my feeling that, that she sincerely cared about Haley Dunn and, and trying to stop the people that, that killed this little girl. I mean, you know, and, uh, and so anyways, here's what she writes. She posts, she shares that video, the murder confession, and says, so I'm the second lady in this video. I want people to know this guy isn't crazy. She's talking about me. And, and if you could share, I would greatly appreciate it. I wish the U.S. would realize what's going on here. Okay, she wrote that. I'm going to show you a screenshot. Of, that's what Christy wrote. And when she shared to her friends on her time, on her Facebook timeline. But after that, for some unknown reason, Christie's desire for the truth changed. Okay, and then she became a uh, hateful and 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 you know threatened me, you know, and don't ever mention my name again, you know. She didn't want me, you know, to you know, and and you know, uh, as you can see, all I've done is take screenshots of what other people said. You know, they can't deny it, right? I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it, a fact's a fact. You know, that's what you said. You know. And uh, and then so I had a conversation with a friend of hers, uh, Julia Brindle. Okay, and I have a print screen of this conversation. And Julia worked down there at Turning Point with her. And she's and um, she she wrote me. And Julia says I can tell you that Christy wasn't lying about what she said about Brett. And uh, and 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 I said back, I wondered if she was threatened or was bribed. And uh, I said she seemed to change her story after she got her kids back. And that's what I wondered. You know that that was part of, you know, they took her kids, and if, you you know, if, if you don't shut up about Haley Dunn, we're going to take your kids from you. That's the feeling that I got, you know, and, and Julia, Julia writes back and says, yeah, I may have been threatened. That is my feeling, and I, I've noticed a lot of other people um, in, in similar ways, you know, they give me information, and then they get scared or whatever, and I never talk to them again, you know, and this is another person like that, okay. And then I'm going to finish that out and saying Christy is only one of more than a, a dozen, half dozen people documented saying that Haley was killed and or buried in Odessa, but her remains were found out, outside of Scurry County two days after I wrote the Department of Justice and suggested that somebody look in the underground facilities by my home. Okay, she had been missing for over two years and poof, there, the Curtis Lloyd finds her over there by, you know, in Scurry County, right? And I got all these people saying that she's over in Odessa, killed, buried multiple places over Odessa. But, you know, uh, one person said that she's buried in the backyard of an Odessa police officer over there, Jackie Thompson, who happened to own a ranch. Remember, remember Christy said, Brett said that they buried her on a ranch. Well, well, I found out Jackie Thompson owned a ranch outside of Odessa, okay? And he was a former Odessa police officer, but it, you know, I think he confessed to moving 500 pounds of meth, okay? Do you see the connection there? I mean, I'm like, I think that's right. And then even Jackie's sister writes me. I have screenshots of all this. I'm not show you here. But Jackie's sister writes me and says, well, if they do find something in his backyard, then he didn't know about it. And I thought, ain't that a weird thing to say? You know what I mean? That was an excuse making for for a brother. You know, I have a print screen of that too. And so, uh, many people are suspecting Haley was dug up from from somewhere over in Odessa and moved to Scurry County because of my email to the Department of Justice. And the main reason is so they didn't come over here and expose these under these four underground homes, three bedroom, twenty five foot deep, connecting to old show prostitution parties, wealthy old man, you know, that's where the little girl got murdered in twenty ten. Old show party connected to the murder of the last homeowner. He died between before the two thousand eight old show started, right? The week before it started. And then I come in and I'm reporting crime and people breaking in my home and, and uh, report a suspected tunnel to the DEA. Two weeks later, my phone lines are cut and I'm shot by some, somebody on the ground. Now it looks like one of them underground homes in my backyard. Anyways, it looking like Haley Dunn, there's a cover-up going on. Haley Dunn has a connection to this backyard. And then the other thing, and I said this before, I found out that Haley's mother, Billy Dunn, was a stripper in the area. More than one person told me that. And then one person told me that she was taking her daughter, this 13-year-old, to the strip clubs with her. Okay, And so I'm thinking this out, and I'm thinking, 
I bet Billy was ordered to work at the oil show parties because my friend that I worked with at, at Clay Desta was ordered to work at the oil show parties. Okay, there was a lot of people there. These are big, big, famous, infamous parties. Okay, and like I said, uh, tens of thousands of people from all over the world, wealth and and money and oil and all that. Okay, and and I believe they're going on the million dollar underground facilities. Well, it makes sense that they ordered Billy to work at the mole show parties two months before Haley went missing. And since she was taking her to the strip club, maybe she took her to the oil show party. So maybe Haley was at the oil show parties going on in October 2010, two months before she, you know, she was kidnapped by, by gang members and taken to Odessa. Okay. And I bet that the wealthy oil owners, you know, the wealthy people and all them, the large amount of people that are there. They don't want anybody to find out that Haley Dunn was there with them at the sex party or whatever, you know. And at the time, she wasn't famous, you know. And I mean, she's just some 13-year-old cute little cheerleader from Colorado City, Texas. Now she's world famous. Millions of people know who she is, you know. And everybody's trying to figure out what happened to her. Here we're all these years later and all this evidence and nothing's happening. So. I'm going to show you uh, these screenshots, and, and that's going to be real quick, and, and then wrap this up, and, and, and y'all share this. I think this is interesting and important. Okay, here we are on uh, Haley Dunn killed over a family drug debt. Th this video was posted in January 2020. That's a picture of Haley, and it was uh, just uh, uh, two days before she reported missing. That's her mother, Billy, and the boyfriend, Sean, okay? And multiple people are documented saying that, he'll, that Haley was killed over a family drug debt. Interestingly, I got a screenshot of a long time uh, police officer in Odessa named Joe Commander, where a woman told me that Billy was a paid informant for, uh, said she was one of Joe's girls. And the question has been asked is if them drug dealers found out or them gang members found out that Billy was an informant, and then that's why they killed Haley. And that's unknown. But right now, it's in the news, Joe Commander is uh, is retiring. Maybe Joe knows something about the, the Haley Dunn murder and or the cover-up. Okay. And and so and then this one here is the News West Nine story exclusive sister jailed woman claiming Haley Dunn was drugged speaks to News West Nine and this was actually posted in October 2012 and that was uh, 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 you know talking about Sonia Renee Callahan and here you can read it where she was supposedly used as collateral for a drug debt that the team's family owed. And, you know, and if you remember, that's the same thing Christy said, that, you know, it was $135 of the meth they owed. And I think there's another video I got where it says that 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 uh, Sean and Billy, or, or at least Billy, withdrew $140 out of an ATM one day. And I wondered if that was to pay that debt off that I was told about. Anyway, this buddy. Talk to y'all later. This right here is the uh, oh the print screens. There's the one that was on uh, I showed you that's on YouTube. This is from Facebook Messenger, and that's only a part of that one there. Uh, I read that to you, and this was the uh, uh, the resignation email there uh, to her supervisors, and uh, you know how uh, stuffed the child and uh, body in a safe and and. Um, Confession to three separate homicide organizational affiliation, etc. And and so uh, and then also, just so you know here, uh, you know, in the beginning, Allison Mack, who is Christy Ott's, uh, you know, shared this video, Haley Dunn murder confession, and you know, and said I'm the I'm the woman in it. She was bragging, telling her friends to share it, and and you know, and so she she's wanting the story told. It seems like that somebody had threatened her, and uh, it is my guess, maybe you know, maybe you had concern in her kids, and you know, and and for legitimate law enforcement might find out who did that, and if you did, then you know you can charge them because the reason they would do that is because they're trying to cover up a capital murder of a child, you know. And so, uh, you know, a real law enforcement officer could uh, could probably get that information out of Christie and find out why she changed her tone. And if it was because of a threat, then whoever is threatening her was obviously trying to cover up the capital murder of a child, you know. And so this was Julie Brindle, you know, telling me, I can tell you Christie wasn't lying and uh, you know, maybe she was threatened. And I read that to you anyway, so I was going to add that.